Good morning, YouTube. I am Bearded Inc. And today we're going to cover the advanced settings for OBS. Uh, previously, we did the basic setup and install for the new versions of OBS to get you up and running. Uh, today, we're going to cover settings designed for the streamers that are a little bit more advanced, but help you get a higher quality uh, sound, visual and stream quality all the way throughout. Uh, basically, we're going to go through all the settings, put them in their advanced modes, and explain why and how uh, for each one along the way so you understand what they do and why you would want to choose those for your streaming setup. So let's go ahead and just jump right in and get started, shall we? Okay, so if you remember uh, in the previous video, we downloaded and installed OBS and we got it set up with a few basic functions so that you could go live. Uh, but one of the first things that you always want to do with OBS uh, to get the best quality is to use it in administrator mode. Now there are a couple of ways to do this and if you follow the previous tutorial, you may have uh, OBS set up in your start menu and you can just right click on that and choose the run as administrator option. Uh, but then you would have to do this every single time and that's a lot of extra clicks that you may not want to do. So I'm gonna show you a quick way uh, that you can set this to always open in administrator mode. Uh, so what we're gonna do is you're going to browse to your uh, OBS directory, which should be in program files or program files x86 if you're on a Windows computer. Uh, and you're gonna look for the OBS-Studio uh, directory. Now, if you remember though, I ran mine in portable mode so that I could run two instances of it. Uh, but once you're in your folder, you're gonna look for the bin folder here. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. The bin folder, we're gonna double click into that. You should have your 64-bit. Inside that, you're gonna scroll down until you find the OBS64.exe. With this one, you're going to right click and we're going to choose the properties tab. And on the properties window that pops up, um, we're going to go to the compatibility tab. Let me zoom in a little bit here so you can see what we're talking about. Uh, so when we go to compatibility, you're going to be met with all of these options here. And what we want to do is we want to come down under the settings and find the run this program as administrator. And we're going to click the little check mark there. We're going to come down and click apply. And then we're going to click OK. So now when we run, it's going to pop up with the Windows UAC asking if you're sure you want to run this program because as administrator, you get elevated privileges. We're going to say yes to that. And then OBS will open. So it's just a quicker way to do it. Now, if you do this option and you have uh, the OBS in your start menu, it will also work for that shortcut too. So this is any way that you open OBS now, we'll go through that administrator mode. So let's go ahead and do that and say yes to the UAC. And then we're going to let OBS open. There it is. Here I am again. Let me go ahead and turn this off because we don't really need it today. Okay. So now that we're in OBS, we are running it as an administrator, which means you have the elevated privileges, which in short, basically means that OBS is going to take priority over other programs that are running on your computer as far as like who gets use of the CPU resources, the RAM, and even the graphics card. And this is important when you are streaming a game, even though you want your GPU to primarily focus on gameplay so you have the better resolution and graphics and smoother playability, you want that reserve RAM in your GPU uh, to be allocated directly to OBS for your stream so that the signal being sent out to Twitch or to YouTube servers or whatever is as high quality as possible without bogging down OBS and getting that lag or the stutter uh, that you sometimes see in streams. So now that we have OBS open in uh, administrator mode, we're going to basically go through the settings now and make everything else as advanced and unique and full of control as possible uh, directly for your specific stream. So let's get started. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the settings menu, and there's a couple ways to do this inside OBS. In your controls panel, 
where you have the start streaming, start recording, you will see there is a settings button there. If you click that, it will open. Uh, and also if we come up to the top in the file menu, there is a settings option here. They both go to the exact same place. It doesn't matter which one you use, but this is what we will get. And this is our main settings pop up here. So we're just going to start from the top. We're not going to go through every single one of these tabs, but we are going to go through a lot of them. Um, so make sure that you have your copy and follow along if you like so that we can get this all set up and then you will be good to go uh, with the highest quality streams possible. Uh, so we're going to start in the general tab and as you can see, you can pick your default language, your default theme, which we covered last time. Um, and then these little check boxes here can really be ignored uh, unless you are doing like screen captures and things like that with OBS, uh, like on a single monitor. Uh, this will hide the OBS window uh, from being captured on the screen. So you can still have it full screen, but anything uh, on top of it or behind it will show instead of OBS. Uh, the updates channel, you can have it automatically check for updates or not. That's up to you. Uh, but what we're interested here is uh, a few things one is the source alignment snapping i covered this a little bit uh, and you can see my settings here uh, i have the snap uh, enabled with a sensitivity of 10 which is about default but the only option i have checked is the snap sources to the horizontal and vertical center and that's because i'm pretty ocd and i like my things to be pixel perfect on my stream uh, so I want to be able to move things one or two pixels at a time to get them lined up exactly right. And if you have it snapped to the edge or to other sources, it's going to do a 10 pixel snap or whatever you have set here. Um, and that can make things not really line up well. Um, but other than that, on the general tab, there isn't a whole lot here to do as far as advanced settings. So you can pretty much keep everything else default. We're going to skip over the stream tab because there are no advanced settings there that we need. And we're going to go right to output. Now, when you come to the output, you're going to see at the very top. And again, I will zoom in for you at the very top is the output mode. And this is for this tab in OBS only. And it defaults to the simple, which you can see uh, here we have all the simple stuff. But what we want to do is we want to drop this down and choose advanced. And when we do that, things are going to change a little. Now we have tabs at the top, and then we have our settings and stuff for each one of these tabs down below. And we're gonna start at the back of the tabs and the replay buffer, and we're gonna work to the front uh, going through. So just follow along here and you'll understand why in just a moment. The first thing is the replay buffer. Uh, replay buffer, what this does, uh, if you have it enabled, it will basically make a small recording of your stream or your recordings uh, on the side and then whatever you have set in the replay time which defaults to 20 seconds it will store the previous 20 seconds of video that you are either streaming or recording so that you can use things like that rewind feature or uh, create a clip uh, going back further than what might be available on the live stream uh, but normally for most of us, unless you're using those specific features, you're not really going to need this, but the option is there for you. Certain plugins that you may have, like the rewind or replay feature, will uh, require you to enable this, and this is how you get to it. So if you're not going to use it, you don't need to check the box, and we can move on. We're going to go to the audio tab now. Now this is very important depending on where you are live streaming. So if you're streaming to Twitch or Facebook or even TikTok, uh, all of these places and Kick as well, and I believe a lot of the other ones don't really have uh, an audio bandwidth limit, uh, and most will default to 320. So if you're streaming basically to any service other than YouTube, you want to come through here to all of your audio tracks, do the drop down, and set them all to 320 doing so is going to send out 320 kilobytes per second audio on each track that you select here and we're just going to do all six of them uh, and it'll have a little bit crisper sound a little bit cleaner a little bit more pronounced and you'll be heard a little easier 
uh, especially in people that don't use headsets and may have like desktop speakers or using speakers on their monitor. If you are streaming on YouTube, however, YouTube has a audio bit rate limit of 160, and that is the default on OBS. And if you try to change to the 320 here and then go live on YouTube, you will get a warning in OBS letting you know that that's not allowed and that you would need to change it. So don't go any over 160 on any of these if you live stream to YouTube. Otherwise, put them at 320 for the better sound quality, uh, and then we're gonna move on. Now you notice that when I'm going through all of this and we're making these changes, I haven't gone down here and clicked apply every time. Unlike some other programs, you can do apply once at the end and it'll apply all changes you've made. If you cancel, it'll cancel all changes you've made along the way. Uh, so we're just gonna go through and make all our changes and then we will hit apply at the very end. So on the recording tab, this is a lot different than the streaming tab. And before on the simple mode, you'll notice uh, that it was all kind of combined into one thing. So the recording uh, is gonna give you a path where you save your recordings to. Uh, this can be your desktop, it can be a specific folder or even an external hard drive, uh, wherever you want those recordings to go to by default. So when you click start recording, it will start recording to that place. Um, you can also have it set general, generate the file name without a space. If you type in, you know, oh, the name of this file is my new video, um, and it will remove any spaces in there to make it all one word. Uh, and then we have recording format, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here because I want you to see this real good. The recording format, uh, Matroska Video or MKV is the default recording option for, uh, OBS and what an MK MKV video is basically means it, it is a MP4 wrapper. So audio and video are included, uh, but it is recorded in sections. So that means you can actually pause a recording. Uh, you can lose power uh, onto your PC. Something could happen. OBS could even shut down when you reopen and continue uh, recording to the same file name instead of overwriting it or giving you an error it will just pick up where it left off and continue on um, it is a little bit slower than mp4 um, but you can also uh, do what's called a muxing which basically takes obs will take an mk video and pull it in read it and output it as a single mp4 file um, and you can do this with past MK4, MKV videos into MP4s, or you can record directly into MP4. And you're gonna see, you get the, the warnings down here letting you know that uh, if something happens like a power failure or OBS crashes, you will not be able to recover an MP4, unlike the MKV. Uh, what you choose basically for your recordings is up to you, uh, but, we like to generally keep things simple and unless you're expecting a power outage or some kind of failure uh mp4 is probably going to be the best wrapper to use for your recordings so moving on down to the video encoder uh whatever the use stream encoder is default and that will be whatever you have selected on the streaming tab which we'll get to in a minute um if you are using and nvidia rtx or uh, amd you will have the options here depending on what is installed in your system if you're using an nvidia rtx card you will have the options here uh, the 264 is a little bit better uh, codec for recording than the hevc um, but it really doesn't matter it's up to your preferences and what you need so we're going to go ahead and select the 264 and once you see and once you see and you see, as soon as we select that, you're going to have some more options uh, show up. And then we're going to have the encoder options down below as well. So we'll get to those in just a moment. Now, the audio encoder, if you have the FFmpeg uh, installed, it'll show up your options here. Um, the AAC is usually what's best for uh, recordings, especially of like live streams and gameplay. 
Uh, but if you are more of an audio engineer or you're doing something specific with audio, such as like uh, recording like podcasts or singing uh, and things like this or studio music quality or studio quality music and things like that, you may want to choose a different uh, audio output. But for most of us, the AAC is going to work uh, just fine. Now, the audio track, you have the six track options. OBS comes default with six audio tracks, which can have different things put on them. Uh, the way to think about this is like if you remember the old DVDs, when you go to the menu option, uh, you have one movie on the DVD, but you have different audio tracks for different languages like Chinese, Japanese, English, Italian, and French. And you can select well, which language you want to hear that movie in. This is similar in that in that regard. Each track can hold a different audio source and you can choose which one of these tracks is the recording is going to. And for this instance, we're going to uncheck the default track number one and we're going to check track number three. And this will be explained in a few minutes later on why you want to do this. Uh, but for now, go ahead and check number three and uncheck number one. Now your rescale output. Now for recordings, you don't really need to rescale your output. As you know from the previous video, we had our default canvas size, which was set to the 1080p. Um, but for recording, you want to record in 1080p and have your video be the full size. So you don't really need to rescale. However, if you find that you need to, you can come in and choose by cubic which is the uh, sharpen scaling. And then from the drop down here, you can pick what you want the uh, output to be. Uh, but for most parts, like I said, for the recording, just leave that disabled uh, because whatever your set, uh, your canvas is set to, that'll be the recording size, which should be 1080p. Uh, we're gonna skip the custom muxer settings because we're recording in MP4. We don't need to remux in MP4. Uh, and you can choose to automatically file split. Uh, so this means it will do a recording and you can have it split uh, like every 10 minutes or every two minutes or every 15 minutes, whatever your choices are. Uh, and it'll basically make a new video at that time. So if you're recording like a long series and you want chapters, if you're doing like an audio book reading or something like this, you can have it set up to be, you know, every 15 minutes we're going to stop and start a new recording. Uh, but for most people, especially for streamers that are looking to like have an option to record your live streams uh, directly without having to download your VOD, uh, you don't want this, right? We want one file and we'll go in and make the edits later. So we're gonna skip this as well. Uh, and we're gonna move on down to our encoder settings. Now this is for your video encoder. Um, the rate control, your CBR, this is what you want. Uh, VBR is a close second. If you know what we're talking about, you can make those decisions. If you don't know what rate control is for a video encoder, leave it at CBR and let's move on. Now your bit rate uh, defaults to 2,500 kilobytes per second. And as you know, in some of my other tutorials, we talk about the bit rate a lot. Higher bit rate means higher quality. And assuming you have a modern computer, something built in the last two to three years, uh, you're going to have a pretty decent CPU. Anything higher than like an Intel i3 or an AMD Ryzen 3 uh, or newer, you will want to have a higher bit rate for your recordings. I set mine to 35,000. Uh, and what this does, basically, it makes the quality a little bit higher, a little bit better, uh, or like putting into your software for editing and things like this, uh, or even for uploading to YouTube or making your shorts for TikTok. Uh, it's a little higher quality and looks better than 2,500. Um, and if you're only doing a recording instead of streaming, you can make this even higher if you like, but I anywhere between 25 and 35,000 kilobytes is going to do you quite well. We're going to skip the keyframe interval. Zero is seconds is the auto, and that's what we want. And so we're going to go to the presets. Now, I'm not going to get into what exactly the presets, the tuning, and multi-pass modes are. I'm going to just tell you what to do 
uh, and why. <laughs> and then we can move on because it's going to be quite long as it is. Uh, so the preset here, uh, as you get higher numbers, the higher P numbers, it goes to P7, uh, is going to be a better quality. Um, but then you have to keep in mind what the human eye is capable of interpreting. And the difference between P6 and P7 uh, is not really noticeable by the human eye, but it is noticeable by your computer in the fact that P7 will use about 15% more resources than a P6. So using a P6 will give you the same quality as far as anybody watching it is concerned, but you're gonna save some resources on your computer. So set the preset to P6 for the best quality uh, that's noticeable. Uh, for your tuning, leave it at high. Multipass mode, we're gonna leave it at two passes at the quarter resolution. Uh, and then your profile is also going to be high. And these, are, these three settings are all default and they don't need to be adjusted. Uh, the psycho visual tuning and look ahead. Look ahead, you can leave unchecked. Uh, basically, this is it enables dynamic B frames. If you are unsure what a B frame is, um, you don't really need to worry about it and leave it unchecked. If you do know what a B frame is, then you're going to know why you would want to use a look ahead in your recordings, uh, which you don't. This would be more for streaming. Uh, and you can go ahead and check that box and then set your max B frames at the very bottom if you want more than two. Uh, Psychovisual tuning though, basically if you hover over the little question mark, it'll tell you it enables your encoder uh, to optimize the use of your bit rate, which is what we set really, really high. Uh, and it tunes it so like things that are blurry become less blurry, motion is e more easily seen, uh, but it uses a lot more GPU resources. So if you are doing a recording and you notice that your computer is starting to catch fire and melt on its desktop, uh, then you might want to turn psychovisual tuning off. Uh, you're going to notice this basically in things like lag spikes, uh, stuttering and things like that. First thing you would do is come in here and uncheck that and then try again before moving on to anything else. But for most of us, go ahead and leave that checked and you're going to be just fine. And then the final two settings here, GPU and MXB frames, leave those at zero and two. And these are going to be for your recordings. So recordings are set now. Let's get to the main meat and the streaming setup. So on the streaming tab at the top here, uh, we're going to zoom in again because we have our audio tracks is the first thing. And now if we've connected to Twitch, you see that we have a Twitch VOD track uh, because what will happen is that Twitch uses a separate channel for the VOD. They don't actually create a copy of your live stream. They create a recording uh, that's sent out by OBS. So you can actually have different audio tracks set up for your live stream and your VOD. And if you remember on the previous tab, we used track three for our recording. Uh, so we're going to use track one for our live stream. And then we're going to come right here and we're going to check the box for the Twitch VOD track. And we're going to make this track number two. Now I'm going to uh, release a tutorial that covers more in-depth audio as far as OBS is concerned, uh, how to properly set up and check your microphone and your headset to ensure that you're getting the best quality going out and coming in, as well as why you would want to set different audio tracks for different things. Uh, and, and then we're going to cover things like filters and plugins for your microphone and your speakers. So you'll, I will explain then why you want these on different tracks uh, and for the recording as well. But for now, go ahead and do one and two uh, audio track and the VOD track. Now we're going to come down here to our encoders again. And this is going to be pretty much the same thing. Your audio encoder. Again, the FFmpeg, the AAC is going to be most of your only option for those of you that will have more options, depending on what codecs you have installed and what type of audio you have uh, on your computer. You may have more options, but the AAC is going to be the default and what you should use. Now, your video encoder, again, this is where you want your uh, one for your graphics card, as you can see. The 264 is only going to be used for those of you that are streaming from a computer that has an embedded GPU. So if you don't have one of the PCIe slot cards, the graphics cards, then you want to use the 264. Otherwise, you want to pick 
the encoder for your graphics card. Uh, the rescale output here, now this is different than the recording because you're not saving this to your desktop. This is what's going to be put out uh, to Twitch or to YouTube or your streaming service of choice. Uh, basically, what this means is we're going to take our scale, so our, our canvas here, and, and let me zoom back out uh, so I can show you here. Uh, if you recall, this black area up here, this is our canvas, right? And we talked about that previously. That's what everything goes on. And this is what goes out through the stream and what stream will actually see. The canvas size, the black area, is set to 1920 by 1080. Um, but recording, or I'm sorry, streaming in 1080p full takes a lot of resources that you may not want to use up. You know, uh, you want to save more room on your CPU to run things more smoothly on your computer and more room on your GPU to run the game a lot more smoother or use higher quality settings. One thing you can do to save a ton of resources is to rescale your output. And basically what this means is you're going to take your 1080p you're going to set everything up in that 1080p resolution and you're going to start streaming. But what OBS sends out is a smaller version. So you can do anything from like a 720p all the way up to like a 936. Um, so you can get full HD at a little bit lower quality, but to save a lot of resources. Now, depending on your monitors, your GPU setup and things like that, you're going to have different options in your rescale output. So we're going to go ahead and, and um, enable this. Again, the bicubic 16 sample is the one that we want. And we're going to come over here uh, to our drop down for the output. And you're going to see the different options that you have available, depending again on your graphics card, your monitors, your PC and your setup and what you have enabled uh, through your BIOS and other things like that. You don't need to really worry about that. These are your options, uh, and this is what you're going to get. Now, I always select the 1536 by 864. 864 is a high definition. Uh, if you have a 9, I think it's 936, if you have that option, go with that option. Just the one right below 1080, whatever that option for you is, choose that option. And here's why. Choosing that one option down is going to save between 10 and 14% of your CPU and between 4 and 9% of your GPU resources. And nobody's going to be able to tell a difference. You stream at 1080p and then you do another stream of the exact same game uh, and the you know exact same settings and everything and you do it at 864 or 936, there's going to be absolutely no visual difference to the human eye between the two. So why waste the resources from your computer when nobody's going to be able to tell the difference anyway? Just like we did on the recording tab, this is going to save resources going out to prevent lag, skipping, jumping, buffering, uh, and put more resources back into your computer so that we can run everything smoothly. And then the encoder settings, we're going to do the same thing uh, with the one exception being the bit rate here. So let me zoom in here. Now, the bit rate I'm going to cover again uh, because I want to teach you how to choose which server to connect to on Twitch um, and your bit rates. Now, if you remember from the previous tab when we set up our Twitch integration on our stream tab here, Right, we did all this connecting. We learned that the maximum video bit rate is 6,000 kilobytes per second on Twitch. Uh, what we want to do, because again, this is going to default to 2,500. Higher bit rates mean better quality. So at a minimum, you want to be at 6,000. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm typing here. 6,000 kilobytes. That's your bare minimum. But when you're streaming and sending this signal out to the Twitch servers, that bandwidth bit rate is going to fluctuate plus or minus about five or 600. So if you're set to 6,000, you may actually be sending out 5,500. You may send out 6,400. It's going to fluctuate the whole time that you're live. Bearing that in mind, if you are 
new to streaming and you're not yet affiliated on Twitch, you're going to have a limit, hard cap limit of 6,000 kilobytes per second. If you are affiliated, you get up to 8,000 kilobytes per second. Twitch doesn't tell you this, but it's true. Now, if you've been an affiliate for less than a year, you're only going to get about 7,000. Any, any affiliate that's been an affiliate and constantly streaming at least once a month over a year, you're going to get up to 8,000. For partners, partners on Twitch get 10,000 kilobytes per second uh, for their streams. But again, that fluctuation matters. And if you go way over that fluctuation limit, uh, your stream is going to get flagged, is going to get uh, basically like a shadow ban. They're going to drop you back down to that 6,000. They're not going to output anything more than that. And your streams are going to be laggy as fuck. So to keep that down uh know where you are in the twitch hierarchy so again if you are set uh if you're new and you're a non-affiliate you want to set this to uh, about 6,000, 6,100, maybe at the most for those of you that have been an affiliate for less than a year uh you want to make this about 63 to 64,000. i'm sorry 6400 um kilobytes per second uh if you are an affiliate that's been a more affiliate for longer than a year, uh, you can go to 6,800. And this is going to keep you under that 8,000 limit, uh, but the high end pegs are going to be about 73 to 74. I keep mine, uh, and I've been streaming for four years on Twitch now, um, and I, I keep my bet rate at about 6,750, 6,800. Um, is what my settings at, but my live streams go out and I average about 7,700 kilobytes per second per stream constantly uh, without that 500 fluctuation. Uh, so as long as I stay under that 8,000, I don't have to worry about that fluctuation and I get the higher bit rate uh, bonus, which makes my streams a little bit higher quality. So keep this about 6,800. Now, if you're a Twitch partner, welcome. But why are you here? You should know what you're doing. No, I'm kidding. Uh, for Twitch partners, again, I uh, would keep it under the 10,000 uh, because of that fluctuation. Uh, so I would set yours to about 9,500, 94 to 9,500 uh, if your computer and bandwidth and, and internet speeds can handle that. Uh, but the tutorial that we're going to do on teaching you how to connect to Twitch servers and set up uh, the speeds that you need, uh, we'll cover all of that in more detail. Uh, but for now, again, 6,800 should be your limit for most of us, okay? And then we're going to do the same settings we did for the recording. P6, high quality, two passes, high, visual tuning is turned on. And now we're done with the output tab. And this is going to be everything that we've done now to make your streams look and sound amazing. So we're going to go ahead and uh, skip over the audio tab as well. Let me, let me zoom out here again. We're going to skip over the audio tab. There isn't a whole lot here. Uh, we are going to cover the sample rate and stuff in that audio specific tutorial I told you about that's going to be coming up soon. Uh, so we're going to jump right into the video tab. Here again is the output scaler. Okay, and this is what we were talking about earlier. Let me zoom in again for you. The base canvas resolution, this is our 1080. The output scale, this is going to output, if we select it again here, this will output everything. This will overwrite what we just set in the stream and the recording tabs. So it's going to be that still same full HD quality uh, with less resource usage. But in case you happen to miss or something gets screwed up in the output tab uh, settings or you change something, this will overwrite that. Uh, and then this is going to be your new default and it'll be just fine. So we're going to drop that down on the output scale and then we're going to move on. Uh, hotkeys are not an advanced set, but here is uh, everything you have that you can do uh, in OBS. And as you add plugins, as you add sources, as you add uh, resources to your scenes and your source list, uh, this list will grow and grow. As you can see, it'll show you each scene and what they are. Uh, and you can set specific hotkeys for each of these different um, options. So you start recording, you start streaming, you can set those to hotkeys. And all you do is click in here and then pick whatever hotkey you want. So we could do like control D or control F. 
uh, and say shift five. I don't know, whatever you want to do, uh, you know, and then you just set it. So now if I were to hit control five on my keyboard, we would start streaming from this account. I want to clear that out because I don't want any hotkeys, but that's how you set them. Not advanced, but there you go. The accessibility tab is for the colors. This is uh, used basically uh, for like your high vis uh, colors and things like that, or for the colorblind. You can come in here, check, use different colors, and then it'll give you the colorblind alternative uh, by default, or you can set it to custom and you can choose your own color. For most of us, though, the default colors are fine. And again, this is things. This is things inside OBS. So your border selection, it's that red bar that we move to drag and resize our sources. Uh, when you crop, what color the crop line is, things like that. It's um, everything in your volume mixer, uh, the bandwidth, if it's unused or used, if it's muted or not, the colors that are there for when you're speaking and things like that. So you can change those colors to better suit your needs uh, if you want to. So finally, we're gonna go to the advanced tab uh, in our settings. Uh, and do a few things here before we call it a day. The first thing you notice is the process priority. Now, remember, we've opened OBS in administrator mode because we want it to have elevated privileges. Now we need to give it the priority to do such. So we're going to drop this down to high. And this drop down here gives you different options. It starts at normal. We want the process priority to be high. This is going to be your CPU process. So anything that your CPU is running, uh, as far as like programs, uh, bringing things in, showing images, quality, uh, speed. We want OBS to take priority when we are live streaming. So we're going to set that to high and then we're going to come down to the video part. Uh, most of this for, for you is going to be default, uh, exactly what you want it to be. You can change the color space from 709, uh, back down to 601, but I don't recommend that if you're on a modern PC, this video section is set up pretty much exactly what we need for streaming. Um, but if you like to fine tune, especially for those of you that like to do like art streams and you may, maybe you have like a light table that you're drawing on uh, with the, you know, the camera coming down or you have bad lighting in your room for your webcam to pick up, you can come in here and, and try a few different settings to see if anything makes a big change. I'm not going to cover all of those now because that would be like an hour long tutorial all in itself. But if you have good lighting, decent lighting, uh, and you're not, you know, having a camera focus like on your RGB keyboard that is constantly in rainbow mode and stuff like this, where the light source is changing and your camera's having to autofocus or whatever, uh, you should probably be able to just to leave this alone and be fine. Uh, the recording file name formatting. This is where we have uh, your, your set, what you name the file. So especially if you're doing like the split things and stuff like that, it will save the file name uh, based on this format. And as you can see, if you hover over it, you get a long list of what is accepted. It's basically all of the year, date, month, month uh, time zones, frames per second, your output resolution, your video formats, things like that that you can set. It defaults to uh, this year, month, day, hour, minute, second. Uh, and so if we were to do a recording, it would be saved as whatever today's date and time is when the recording was started, dot MP4. You can ch change this to only, you know, you, you can have it say words. So we could say recording. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. We can say recording and then hyphen and remove that space and then hours, minutes, seconds. So the name will always be recording. And the only thing that will change would be the time behind the name recording. Uh, if this file name exists, you can overwrite it uh, and you can automatically remux to MP4. Uh, but you have to be recording in MKV mode to do this. So if you are in MKV mode when you're recording, if you check this box when the recording is ended, OBS will automatically change that into an MP4 for you. So that's one option that you can do to have the best of both worlds. Okay. The stream delay. Uh, most of us do not want a stream delay. 
<laughs> right? We do everything we can to avoid having a delay in our stream uh, because streams already have that built-in buffer delay of between two and three seconds. Uh, however, if you do decide you need one, and why would you want one? This will help with the uh, the setting for the replay buffer. Remember that the 20 seconds that we have there. Uh, it will also enable you to do something, make a change quick, and then cut something off and then go back. For the most part, unless you have a very specific reason, like a specific plugin or program that requires it, which will tell you in the setup instructions to turn on the stream delay, you can leave this turned off. The automatically reconnect, uh, this is so if something happens, if you lose internet for a second, if you have like a brownout or something happens on, on your uh, Twitch or YouTube side where they kind of uh, stutter a little bit and your stream gets disconnected, OBS will automatically try to reconnect and continue on. Um, like Twitch gives you 90 seconds to reconnect before they end your stream. And that's where you get that little blue screen with the oh, face palm emote guy there. Uh, so this allows you to tr automatically try to reconnect. So obviously this is enabled by default. Two seconds is good, but I set my tries to 30 just in case, because sometimes my modem or my router takes a little bit longer to kick on than it should. Uh, so this is going to basically try for about a minute because we're doing it every two seconds um, to reconnect. Once we reconnect, then everything will kind of slowly catch up. Okay, the last thing we want to check uh, is down here. We're going to scroll down here is the uh, under sources is the enable browser source hardware acceleration. Uh, basically, what this does is it uses your computer's resources, all of those resources that we've saved from lowering our output and correcting our bandwidth and bit rates and all of that uh, can be used now to help our browser sources especially local browser sources. But if you bring in a lot of widgets from like Streamlabs or Stream Elements, uh, external sources, sound alerts, and all of this kind of things, your browser sources need resources to run and connect and all this properly using your own hardware acceleration, which basically is your computer to do that, uh, makes things a lot easier, a lot better and run a lot smoother. So you want to leave this box checked. However, if you notice that you have a lot of browser sources that are not acting right, they're not working at all, there's a lot of stuttering and lag, uh, it may be because your computer is bogged down a little bit. So come in here, uncheck this box, and then we're going to click apply and retest. Uh, and, and if it works, simple fix. If it doesn't work, you have a bigger problem, but you've only wasted about three seconds of your time trying to see what the problem was. And this will help also narrow down where the issue is uh, if you do have those problems. But by default, leave it checked so that you use your own computer to help everything move a lot smoother. So now that we've gone through all of the advanced settings, we've set everything up, we can now come down here and click apply. And then we're going to click OK. And we're done. That's it. Uh, your settings now uh, in OBS are streamlined for your stream. Uh, and your recordings as well, uh, especially if you're doing both because you can stream and record at the same time. Uh, so now you're going to have high quality looking and sounding streams that run really smooth based on what your computer is capable of pushing out. All right. So we covered advanced settings and configuration in OBS today, and I hope that you found it helpful. Maybe you learned a couple of new things. Uh, and thank you for watching. Uh, if you like the content, go ahead and give me a little thumbs up there on that like button. Uh, and if you're new to the channel, welcome. It's good to have you. I hope that you find this useful. Uh, and if you do and want to know the next time I post something in another tutorial, go ahead and click that subscribe button. It makes me feel good and I appreciate you. Uh, coming up in the future, we're going to cover uh, the advanced audio uh, settings in OBS to have you have a better microphone and sound quality. Uh, for your streams and recordings. So look forward to that. Uh, and then we're going to get back into uh, more of the organization in OBS uh, as far as like scene collections, setting your scene and sources for organization, nested scenes, and all this kind of things. Uh, so we're going to have an organizational tutorial as well coming up in the next couple of weeks. So look forward to those. Uh, 
if you're into the OBS tutorials. And we thank you for being here. Now, if you have something specific OBS related or anything streaming related that you want me to cover in a tutorial, drop a comment uh, below and let me know what that is. I do my best to answer every single comment that comes in. Uh, if you have a question, a concern, a snide remark, if you didn't like something, if you did like something, let me know that too. Uh, leave, leave a comment below and let me know what you didn't like, what you did like, what you, what you thought. And uh, we'll, we'll take that under advisement. Uh, we will thank you for your comment and, and see if we can improve these tutorials moving forward. Um, all right, everybody, thank you for joining in. We'll see you next time when we learn how to control our audio and organize OBS a little bit better. And until then, everybody, love, peace, and chicken grease.